Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Thanks. All right, it's that time. So, trusses got to go up today. Or that's the goal anyways, to get all seven trusses up. So our trusses are 10 foot on center. So basically, we'll start at this end like we talked about in previous videos. Because remember, whatever end we start our walls from, we measure them out. We want to do everything from that same end and work in the same direction. So we'll get up there. We'll mark that. Uh, first, actually, I'm going to mark this down here just because I'm already here and it's easier. And then the next step, well, actually, I guess the step between that would be waiting for my neighbor. My neighbor's actually going to come over here and help me set these trusses and uh, run the purlins real quick. Or we say real quick, hopefully it's real quick. This is the tractor we're going to use. I'm going to throw the forks on the front of it because our neighbor also let me borrow the boom pole. And it'll, if you watched when we built this building, we used the 7045 because it can reach high enough. However, we didn't have that boom pole. We borrowed another one. It wasn't quite long enough. We had to make, so we ended up making our own pole. And it worked, but this one's a much better setup, so we're going to use it. Let's see if it starts. It hasn't started in like a week or two. It's not cold, but it's not warm out either. Got down to like 35 last night, 40, something like that. Now it's about 48 outside. So, like I said, not terrible out, but not nice either. Well, it could be worse by all means, but it's not 70 and sunny like I'd prefer. All right, there's my driver. Done with your yogurt. There's Bella. What are you doing, sweet old lady? So this tractor only weighs about just under 3,000 pounds. Not a lot, right? We're gonna put a counterweight on the back of here. I'm gonna take this uh, tiller off the rest of the way. I've already kind of inadvertently came off on me. So we're gonna put that counterweight on. So we'll put the boom pole on here and it's sticking way out to lift up a 300 pound truss. You know, 300 pounds isn't a lot for it. It'll pick that up with no problem. But when it's, you know, 15 feet away from the front of the tractor, then it makes it where it weighs a lot more. All right, so we've got our counterweight on. Weighs roughly 500 pounds, maybe a little more. Plus the cute counterweight on top, which won't be staying there. He'll be in the driver's seat. So let's go get the boom pole on and get these trusses marked. Got my handsome paperweight here. He's holding the tape in place for me. So I already measured over six inches because I'm gonna have two by sixes running down the top of this right here as a purling. So when the purlins are running down this, basically this is what we're marking is where they're going to land that way we don't have to guess where they should be or try to measure or put a spacer board or anything like that so this is our base mark and all i'm going to do is i'll take the speed square and i'll go straight down like this and i'll make my mark and i did it again from the bottom like this with the rock not in my way and that's how i got my marks there and now i'll mark again on the top of these all the way down where my marks are going to be that way I can set, or I can make my marks and then do the exact same thing. I'm gonna mirror them onto the top. All right, so you can see that we've got it all marked. The blue marks going down are where all the purlins are gonna land. And then of course the ones at the end will just be flush to the end, so we didn't mark that. Uh, just like laying out a wall, you know, the difference is, is that we're using two by six purlins. Uh, we also use two by six girders. Don't have to, you can use two by fours. There's nothing wrong with that. And then we also did two foot on center for our 
uh, purlins. We did five foot on center for our studs. And again, it's all gonna be based off of where, that's all gonna be based off of where you live. So for instance, if I lived in Minnesota, no, this would not work because the snow load would be way too much and it would obviously collapse the walls and it would collapse the roof at 10 foot on center. If you live in an area where it's high winds, same thing. Um, our winds do get high, but not that high to where we need to um, have anything as far as extra, extra studs or extra trusses. The uh, other thing is that we're gonna brace, you'll see it once we get together, but once we get all these walls leveled up and we get the uh, trusses running, we'll actually have two, um, two by sixes, one going down this way, one going down this way, and then same thing on this side, all the way around for every wall. And that'll actually brace it um, to where it can't, it'll kind of lock it so it can't shift back and forth. And then we'll do the same thing inside the trusses. So when the trusses are stood up, we'll have one coming from the top of the outside truss down to the bottom of the second truss. So it, it all makes sense. So what you see Gage doing is driving me around, but what he's doing is he's driving me around so I can stretch the tape out, make my marks. Even though my studs are perfectly line center, it's still easier when I have the mark up top to be able to see where my trusses land. And then I'm just making a little line on both sides here. Basically the same layout, kind of set up where I made the two lines for the wall. Those are rough. So if we're stopping every 10 feet to mark a truss, and we just stopped at 30, what's our next stop? 40. Yeah, we'll keep going. Alright, stop. Nope. <clears throat> we'll steam ahead. So if we stopped at 40, what's our next stop? 50. So, what you probably can't see, or at least not from this distance, but I forgot to record. All the way across the bottom here, there's screws that attach to that outside girder, that two by 12 that we ran across the top of our walls, right? And then on the inside here, we have one two by six right here, and one right here that we had holding that first truss up. Once we got that up, and we got connected to the second truss, we have disconnected it because we wanted to level everything out. Jason keeps running back and forth. He's got it down to a science now and getting these in and out without even needing my help. All I'm doing is, as Jason brings them, I'm measuring to make sure I'm still 10 foot on center on my trusses, and I'm making sure that they're vertical, or sorry, plumb or level. And I'm also tacking the edges over here. So I'll tack that edge. And then I'll go to the other side over here, and I'll tack this edge, and then I come up and usually do the center. This man's got it down to a science. Look at this. Brings him in completely on his own. What more could you ask for in the movie?
Hey everyone, sorry. I know we didn't record a whole lot. However, we got a lot done. And unfortunately it didn't get recorded because as you can see, it started to rain. And it's been doing this all day and we tried to just hurry up and get at least the trusses up because tomorrow I can get the purlins up on my own. Jason was nice enough to come help, but it is his wife's birthday this weekend, or it was this week, but they're celebrating this weekend. So it makes sense for them to go enjoy themselves. Christy and I can handle the purlins, no problem. Um, we got these three sets of purlins run. We got the very top set right here run all the way across. You can see that we also did the bracing that goes in the center. So it goes from the top of the outside purlin or outside truss down to the center. We run two by sixes all the way down the center of the trusses as well. And then we did the same thing out here. And then we will also do it from here to the corner and we'll do it from there to here. And we'll do the same thing, on, excuse me, do the same thing on that end. However, for now, we're done for today and we will catch you tomorrow. So I'll be back in the morning. It's brighter out, but it's much colder. Hopefully maybe that cloud cover and such will burn off. And it won't be that bad. Uh, breeze isn't terrible, but it is out of the north. So it's a little colder than normal. As you can see by the way I'm dressed. But looking at that, I don't know if you can see it from here, the green lights, all three of them are on on the scissor lift, so that's definitely good and charged. And we can see how our floor drains. So that's also nice. It drains pretty well, actually. That's the only, so we just need to keep water from those sides over there and we're good. But it drains very well to the center. Look at you. Knock the other ones down. Going up. Can you do it yourself? Hmm? What I'm trying to show, hopefully you can see it. But we're right here on 10 foot on center on this truss and that's what we want. We're just confirming the measurements as we go. Make it to where we don't have to worry about getting to the end and being like, oh man, this is all out of whack or it's out of square. So now I'll mark this like so. I had a pencil, I lost it, so using a screw. Uh, made a lot of progress um, I forgot to mention something so just like on the girders we want to do the exact same thing on the purling see how every other has a splice on here now on the girders because the walls were five foot on or the studs were five foot on center on the walls we were able to stagger it more often however being that we have a truss every 10 feet makes it to where a 20 foot board will only span three trusses so one two and three Meaning that every other one on this is always going to have a seam on it. It's okay, as long as you stagger it. The other thing is, I meant to record it and I forgot. I'll try to remember on the next one. The angle, that brace that you see right there, that goes from this uh, right here, centered on the truss at the bottom, and it goes back to that corner. That is all part of basically racking the roof. And what it does is it makes to where the corner is tied into the center here so every triangles are the strongest shape 
and that's what you're doing you're just making more triangles it makes it to where that wall basically can't come in and it also makes it to where this truss at the bottom can't shift in and out so i'm gonna keep going just wanted to point that out and uh when i do the next one i'll show you how we do that bell what do you think are we doing a good job you're happy about it you want to give me a high five over it bella sit go give me a high five good job look at that the supervisor supervisor approves good marking the 60 degree angle here is going to make it to where it's creating a straight line from where it's connecting up there and it's going to mount flush to where it's connecting on the truss so we'll mark that and then we'll do the opposite on that end so on this side we're cutting off that the top right probably can't see the nail mark or the scratch mark on the nail on this side we're going to cut off the top left the smoke coming out of his ears. <laughs> it's always good to double check. With today's lumber prices, you definitely want to measure twice and cut once. I'm not going to show you the way I cut it because it's not very thick. Alright, so we actually connect into these gusset plates. And the reason being is because they're easy to catch with the screws. Set against the wall. Better. All right, so edge of the gusset plate, and I'll put my screw through the meteor part of this board so it's actually holding more. If you make your angle off, like I did on that one, because I was fighting with that, I didn't have a very good battery in there. I should have changed the battery. That's what the result is. But you really want it to be flat like this one is. Get it up there, get it started. Flush it to the bottom so it's not hanging down. You can actually see how that one's on there. Attention to that, what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened on that truss. I was showing him an example. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is so beautiful. No, <laughs> oh, come on. That's what that's why. around to do this. This is awkward. Is it? It is. Alright. You driving this thing onto the trailer? Nope. Oh. Gabe's drove it on. My life insurance ain't that good. That's it. Walls, purlins, girders. I'm sorry. Walls and girders, trusses and purlins. All of our uh, corner braces and our top braces here for our trusses, everything's done. At this point, all we have left to do is pick up our metal. And we're actually going to town right now to go order it. So hope you all enjoyed the video. Stick around, you'll see us put the metal on here shortly. There will be windows. Uh, needless to say, there's a walkthrough door right here. And there's a 16 by 10, 16 foot wide, 10 foot tall door right here. And then, uh, yeah, that's that's it so like i said i hope you're enjoying it if you enjoyed the video please don't forget the like button and of course if you really want to or consider subscribing to the channel we'd appreciate it okay, anything to say are you driving it on the trailer okay
flow gauge, slow. So now I want you to turn just a little bit to your right. Yep. Now come forward. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Stop. Now turn really hard left. No, don't, don't move. Yeah, just do that. Yep. Just turn only. Nope. Stop. Just turn only. So squeeze the trigger and press. There you go. All right. Now come forward just a very little bit. A little more. All right. Now straighten your wheels out. Are they straight? There you go. I think we could live with that. Not bad, buddy. You did a good job. Do you want to drive it again? <laughs> I actually do need to make a measurement. I should have done it before we took this down, but 